Good everyone and welcome to the Monday Night Filming Talk Show sponsored by Small Affordable Cars. It's been an eventful week for Blues. Obviously starting with the um, open house session last Monday, then away at Blackburn. We have a good first half and shipped sort of three early goals in the first 15 minutes of the second half in a bit of a 15 minutes of madness. But yeah, basically, you know, it's a long road and it. We've just got to keep positive and uh, try and stay positive as we go and hopefully things will get better soon. But tonight we're joined anyway. And also, sorry, I forgot to mention that Bo Brummie's had a, a facelift. Debatable whether it's for the better or not. But we'll soon discuss that as we go on. But we're joined tonight by Craig Courtney. Good evening, all. Welcome back, Chairman of the Board, Alan Watton. Uh, good evening. Ooh, sounds a bit rough. All the way from America, Mark Meredith. Evening, all. All the way from Coventry, Mark Adams. Evening, everyone. <laughs> Fair Ghibli. Good evening. Ooh, and again, last but not least, Chris Brown. Good evening. So yeah, so Craig, give us your thoughts on start. Let's start with Blackburn on Wednesday. Give us your thoughts on that, and then we'll we'll come on to Saturday. Uh, I mean, I guess the the, the first half uh, Blackburn, we we did well. We held them, albeit not many chances that we had on on goal, but we held them. It was looking tight at half time, and then second half, ten minutes of total and utter. Madness is the only mm. way to, to describe it. Shipping two goals that ultimately were, for me, goalkeeping errors. And one, one other that should never have got through the defence. But then moving forwards, and it was almost like somebody flicked a switch and uh, we came to life. But Dembele was, was absolutely sublime. I mean, two great goals. And then, to be honest, 3-2, I was thinking, you know, we could go and get the equaliser, but it was always that case that uh, as we moved forwards, they could hit us on the uh, on the counter-attack, and that's exactly what happened for the fourth. I would rather go hell for leather going for a draw than and, and lose 4-2 than sit back and just go, I'll accept the 3-2, you know. It's, it's perfectly acceptable. So they tried, but those 10 minutes of total madness ruined the, the night, I think, for, for everyone. Because mm, I thought first half we were outstanding, really were. But you got to put the ball in the back of the net when the chances come. And we had 26 shots on goal at Blackburn. But, you know, only scored, I say only, but we scored two at Blackburn, you know, out of 26 shots. So that needs to improve. And then defensively for me as well, we definitely need to get better. But uh, Claire, what are your thoughts? I mean, I agree with the first half that we're decent the first half. I think we need to practice shooting, to be honest. Um, it became a bit frustrating in the second half when you got the centre backs trying to do worldies from like 30 yards. A bit confused about that. I just, is Ruddy the man for the job? I've spoken to a few Wolves fans and they said he's a brilliant shot stopper, but with his feet, he's awful. Mm. Um, so is it time to give Etheridge a go? I don't know. Are they trying to get rid of him in January? I don't know. It's just, it's the same old, same old. We keep talking about defensive errors. We keep talking about, you know, when we go forward. Yeah, actually, do you know what? We actually look quite good. Um, you know, some of the play, like Dembele going through and everything. But what we're noticing is, is if you ever watch, like, some of the top teams, they pass it in front of the player. They pass it forwards. We pass it right to their feet or behind them. Mm. But... You know, at least, like Craig said, at least we went for it and we didn't just sit back and go, oh, we're going to lose, you know. And it was it was all of a sudden, there was like a switch and it was like, oh, we're actually playing a game of football and we've got to try and win this. So there, there was positives from Blackburn. Um, I wasn't expecting anything because we never get anything from there anyway. So, yeah, mm. it wasn't too bad, but... I think they said... I think they said that we've won once there in the last 53 years, Blackburn. Yeah. It is a, definitely a bogey ground. Um, but these records are there to be broken. And the players going out there on the night probably didn't even know that, you know. But um, we've definitely got to... I mean, for me, I think until he can get some players in that can play this way, in my opinion, he needs to change it up a little bit to suit the players we've got. Otherwise, we're going to start sliding even further down this table playing like this with these players. And that's that's my opinion. But uh, also, give us your thoughts, mate. <clears throat> well, I remember that game 53 years ago. Uh, Bert Murray and Barry Bridges scored ours. Um, uh, well, the, straight away, I put, I, I put, I looked at the team and I thought, hang on a minute. On Saturday against Sheffield Wednesday, we had for the first time our best back four. Uh, the two wonderful fullbacks we've got were back in the side. Buchanan was outstanding. Uh, the middle two were fine, and we change it. We leave Lang out. Why? 
And this oh, this oh, yeah. this um, revival that came in the second half came after they brought him on, but they didn't go back to the good back four. They went back to a new one. They moved Buchanan inside and moved uh, the other guy oh, back to his back. And yeah. we scored. Well, and they, we conceded another goal. Now, I just, uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm tired of this. If if you say R- R- Rooney's crap, then you're a Villa fan. Yeah. Uh, and if you if you if if you support Rooney, we're well, basically a mental case. You know, that's the the, the the facts are. I can't fathom out what he's trying to do. You know, against against Sheffield Wednesday, um, it wasn't brilliant, but it it looked like. He decided on what was going to work, and it, for all intents and purposes, it worked. And then against Blackburn, we thought, we'll try something else. Well, yes, I know we're trying to create something new, but let's get a few three points under the bat in the bag, uh, so we can we we can then start doing that. Mm. Um, I had my my mate this morning who's a Plymouth supporter. <laughs> he said, "We're only one point behind you." And I said, well, if you're one point behind us at the end of the season, you'll go down. Because, you know, we've, we, we, it's just, it's, I mean, Saturday, oh, I just, I can't get over how bad that was. Mm. We were so lucky to get away with not losing. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the chance where the guy had got the ball and there was only Sanderson on the line on his own and he mm. managed it, you know, yeah. that was there's somebody looking after us. That's the only positive thing I can think of. That there's, the guy upstairs is thinking, we can't let these poor buggers suffer like anymore. Mm. Um, and that I, I, I can't see any progression. I, 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 can, I, I, can, I saw some progression against Sheffield Wednesday and it went backwards. It was one step forward, three back. Mm. And then a, a, another two back on Saturday. That, that's, that's what I find so frustrating. There's no method. <laughs> And that's usually how transitions work, though, isn't it? And it is a bit of a transition at the moment. You know, he's, he's got to... We've just got to give him time, I think. Give him a bit of time. Give him this transfer window in January. I'm not saying he's going to go out there and sign a whole new team. He hasn't got the money to do that. But even if he can get three or four players in and maybe ship a couple out as well. I mean, for me, I'd send Oliver Bird back, I'll be honest now. He, you know, for me, I wouldn't... And if he's in the squad, then I certainly wouldn't be starting with him. In, you know, when you've got Djokovic and Hogan sitting on the bench in my opinion they're both better for that job than him uh, and he's not a number nine to be fair to the guy you know, he's Burke not... Low. Yeah. yeah yeah where yeah. from word of Bremen um, oh, right. you know so um, he's not it's to be fair to him he's not he's not an out and out striker and he's playing next to Stansfield and for me if he's going to play then he plays wide you know that that's um, where he's kind of like played most of his career out, out, out wide on the right but you know in my opinion, Jordan James should have started the game as well on Saturday. Again, why, why, did, why oh, didn't he start? Yeah. I don't know. You know, no I idea. Think Billy's why he left. been awful since Rooney's come, and I don't know whether that's there's something behind that because obviously he played for him at Derby. Um, that's probably what's behind it. Well, that's yeah. what, so <laughs> there's something going on. There's something going on behind closed doors because they all come out and be like, "Yeah, you know, we're supporting. We're you know, all behind mm. him." But then when your manager's basically telling everybody that you're not doing a very good job, you need to grow some balls. That was his thing, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. To, yeah. You know, yeah. That, that to me is not, that's not how you work in English football. It's not how you work with players. And I just think, you know, imagine your managers and things coming out and being like, right, come on, you're not doing a very good job. You're not doing this. It's demoralising. And I just think... He's not going the right way about it. Maybe I was talking about, I said this on our chat, you know, when you watch Pep Guardiola, when you watch the Tottenham manager, when you watch Arteta, they are kicking every ball on that sideline. Even Eustace used to kick every single ball. Rooney stands there. Now, if, if he had the glittering managerial career that some of them have had, and he stood back and went, go on then, fine. But surely your managerial career hasn't been great. You have got to prove people wrong. And, you know, like he had, he was passionate when he played for Everton and Man United. He, you know, you could see the passion when he played. So he needs to bring that into management. 
Maybe mm. because that's not what they need to be doing. He needs to shout at them from the side. Mm. And then if they don't listen to him, okay then. But he just stands there with nothing. Ashley Cole and John O'Shea are sat lovely and warm on the bench because it's now heated. Were they actually there this, on, on Saturday? I couldn't spot him on the... Oh, Cole was there. I don't think O'Shea was. Yeah, yeah, O'Shea was there as well. They yeah, were they were they were up beforehand. But I think... I, I, I mean, Claire, I know we exchanged messages as well after the game on, on Saturday. And, and actually, it's interesting because the same comment I came out with on Saturday has actually come on the message board today for me and Clayton saying, shouldn't the players take responsibility? Of course. Actually, you know, part of Saturday, they, they should do because I know they're being put into a position that they don't like. You know, it's it's that, that, that sort of change situation that nobody really likes. But against Ipswich, for 65 minutes, we were phenomenal. Mm. Yeah. It was only because we, we ran out of steam that we couldn't hold that game. And what I really don't understand, and I'd love the players to just try and articulate, really, is what is it with us playing teams that are below us in the league? Mm. Right? Because it's not just it's not just this weekend and, and against Chef Wednesday. Right? It's, it's forever. We come up against a team that we, on paper should walk away and beat and there is, I know there is no such thing in this league as a, a, a team that you should walk over but we don't turn up but when we played the, top, the likes of Ipswich right, we turn up we're a team and we were we were great and in fact dare I say it when we play Leicester in a couple of weeks right it wouldn't surprise me one little bit if we just don't turn up as a team again because mm. we almost have to increase our level to to be up against these these better teams that should never happen. You should go out with the same level, whether you're playing somebody second from top, top or second from bottom or bottom. Makes no difference. We should turn up the same way. And the players do, for me, need to kind of stand up a little bit and, and just be honest with themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark, I mean, Mark, Mark Adams, I'll come on to you now, but I don't know about you, but I'm sat there on Saturday thinking they don't look confident out there. They don't look like they're comfortable playing like this. What, what do you think? No, I mean, like, like like we've alluded to a minute ago, I mean, you could talk about tactics and all the rest of it, but the decision-making was terrible, and I don't know why. I mean, the first 15, 20 minutes were quite bright, but the amount of balls that were just either floated across to no-one or just lashed across, you know, with no thought, um, two-yard passes that were just going all over the place, it's nothing to do with tactics or who the manager is. We need to get inside the heads and say, what is going on? Why can you not suddenly passable two yards or, yeah. or look up and give and go you know there's nothing there um, I mean to be fair the first 15 minutes I thought we were quite bright and I thought yeah, yeah we, we could win this um, but it seemed to go go downhill as soon as Laird went off um, yeah. absolutely yeah. They, they lost all leadership and everything yeah yeah I think he just needs to tell them to relax and enjoy it a bit you know because when they go out and play in front of us you know they just seem a bit nervous to me they look a bit nervous and a bit you know uncomfortable I don't know what everyone I mean what Mark Meredith what do you think as well yeah, you know, I, I spoke to you guys a little bit on the um, on the chat after Saturday, and, and for me, you know, he's come in with his own coaching philosophy and system, um, and he's got an arrogance about him, and I I um, agree with you, Paul. I think it needs to change at some point, even if he goes back a few steps. Um, yeah. But he seems to have the arrogance of he's not going to change it. This is what he's going to do. But it's clear to see um, from everybody that the players we have can't play that system. And, you know, going back to Ruddy, Ruddy... For the, I would argue with anybody to say Ruddy's been one of our best players all season. Yeah, and you know, an England international in the past, and a great goalkeeper, and you can just see the nerves and the uncertainty of what he has now that is forcing him to make these mistakes. Oh. You yeah. know, he's just like he can't use his feet. We know that, so don't force him to do that. He's not a sweeper keeper, so don't play him behind the back four. You know, we caused two goals against Blackburn because he's in positions that he shouldn't be in, yeah. and he gets put out by it. And then for, for somebody like a manager to come out and openly talk about his players like he does, I think, you know, as a leader, and I'm, I'm a coach myself, as you know, as a leader, I think players thrive on the passion and the excitement and the commitment that you as a coach put in there. And watching him, he doesn't give me any of those vibes. And I think that the, the sad thing is, you know, four months ago, we talked about how how excited we were for this squad that we got these players in. There wasn't lone players anymore. There's there's real good quality in there. And now as fans, we're questioning their ability 
um, because of the change. And and I believe, yes, the players obviously are professional soccer players, like uh, football players. I get it. But what I do believe is that the nerves and the uncertainty of them now and the lack of desire and, and commitment and passion from their leader is something that's causing big problems in there. Mm. Um, I don't believe that he's, right. leader, you know, I don't believe he's the leader of the players we have in front of us. Now, I do honestly think he's going to be here for the foreseeable future. So I think yeah. what what will happen is we'll probably see a lot more change in the, the player personnel than we will with the management side. Mm. And we have to give him till January. We have to see what he can buy in January. But I think he, if he doesn't bring the players in in January that suits the style that he's demanding, then it's going to be a, a long second half of the season for us all. Exactly, yeah. And that's yeah, my concern. Jan, Jan, he was given the captain's armband last year. Yeah. And, mm. and thrived under it. Absolutely yeah. thrived under it. Now he, he looks like a jellyfish. Yeah, he got played. You know what gets me, sorry, Paul. You know what gets me, Alan, is that five months ago we we sat on this show and we were all saying about how you know he was going off to Luton Ruddy and they were saying oh we can't lose John Ruddy you know he's the he's the best goalkeeper we've had for years and yeah, let's make sure he signs a new contract etc etc and then after Saturday you've got thousands of fans going on Facebook I can't believe Ruddy's here he's too old and my argument is he's not he's five months older than when you said he was a good player so there's not much difference in age mm-hmm. sure yeah. you can see now the point of that he's not comfortable in the system that we're trying to play and all the weaknesses from everybody on the field are coming out in one go, and that's why it's so bad. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I do think that I do. I mean, uh, this is just a theory. Uh, John Ruddy probably um, okay. He's into a season and a half with us now. There, there, there is, if 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 you are, if you're getting on a bit, there there is a call. You know, there is a possibility that you know you're getting tired, and you know you need you need to. Need to be out the side for a while, get some rest, get get some, you know, revitalization. That's a mm. possibility. But as you say, Mark, it's only five minutes, five months since we thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> so, what 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 is it? What is it? Just this style of play for me. I think for me, Rooney's come in. He's buzzing. He's got the job. He's he's pleased to be here, and he's trying to walk mm. before he, he's trying to run before he can walk. Sorry, you know, and you, mm. you can only do it in baby steps and. You know, he's trying to get them, trying to get us to play this brand of football that just doesn't suit the players at the moment. And yeah. my concern is that he'll stick with it and we'll start to slide even further down the league and see if he can get some players in in January. And then hopefully, you know, from February onwards, when we've hopefully got three or four players in, you know, whether that's loans or whether he's got anything to spend, I don't know. But hopefully then we'll start to see a better, better second half to the season from uh, sort of February. I'd ask, you, I'd ask you one question about that for you 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 were there on Monday so you probably saw things that I didn't see but I one of the things that annoys me about Rooney he doesn't seem to be excited to be there he just talks he'll avoid interviews if he can you know the, the Thursday night interview he skipped that a few times whereas you know previous managers have never missed uh, and, and, and I don't get I, I don't I don't get it when I see him on the touchline and I don't get it before or after games when somebody's talking to him. It's, oh, well, yeah, we made our own mistakes, blah, 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 blah. And I used to get annoyed with with uh, Eustace for saying, oh, there's positives to take out of it. Because if you've lost, you don't get any points. You, you don't care how many positives you get. You don't get any points. No. And, 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 and Rooney isn't even, I mean, he... he, he he just basically slags off his team, saying, "Oh, they, they they cause their own problems." Well, no, they're causing you problems, and you ain't solving them. Mm-hmm. You know? No, you are right, and, and and the team is a is a reflection. And Mark Meredith, correct me if you think I'm wrong here, but the team out there on the pitch is a reflection of the manager, isn't it? Hundred percent. That's what I was just that's what I was just saying there. You know, they they thrive on how you react. So, regardless, my my certain thing with working with kids now is that. Regardless of how my day goes and whatever's happening away from the field, if I don't go onto the pitch buzzing and ready for it and passionate and everything else, then my player's reaction is exactly the same as mine. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a big thing right now is that we don't see anything from him from from the first whistle to the end to make it look like he's got any sort of passion towards what's going on on the field. Yeah, exactly. 
Sorry, Paul. If you, I'll say, if you look, if you're a player and you look over at the touchline, and we've said it before, if you're looking at the manager like that, you know what sort of vibe does that give off? Mm, yeah. It's just mm. just complete confusion, isn't it? Well, That's I, what I mean. When, go on, when you're watching like Sunday, when you watch Super Sunday, and you know, unfortunately, I had to watch the other side of the city play. But even their manager was shouting. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like it, you just sometimes just need somebody there to kind of carry you forward. Yeah, um, no. But you know, this is the same form as we saw before the Huddersfield game. Yeah. So if we've got five points from twenty-four, if it was anybody else, would you be like, "Oh, we're not quite sure about this"? You know, Eustace, we had it where we all, you know, we all sat here going, "Oh, what do you reckon?" Now, yeah. is that relegation form? Is anything going to change? What happens if it becomes? You know, eight points from 36. Yeah. What happens if it, you know, there's got to be a, a cut off point where you go, actually, this isn't working here. Mm, absolutely, yeah. But on a positive, was that our first clean sheet in seven games? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> was well, that yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. And it looks like Laird could be out. It looks like Laird could be out for a while now as well, isn't it? Yeah. He'll definitely yeah. miss Friday, won't he? He yeah. limped up and, you know, he's going to have a scan today. Um, so no, that that'll be a big miss for us for sure. When's Anderson back? Wasn't he supposed to be back after the international break? I think he's left. Where's Tyler <laughs> Roberts as well? Like he he's got the easiest three and a half year contract I think oh, any yeah. footballer has ever had. He hasn't even played, and there's no no sign of him. It could be one of the biggest crocs in our history. Yeah, like honestly, I I don't I don't understand that one. But, like, I think Anderson would make a difference in this team. I really do. Um, yeah. You know, if we get everybody back from the start, I think we'd be okay. But, like, you know, Tyler Roberts, surely there's got to be some ink in his contract that, that if he doesn't play a certain amount of games, because he doesn't play football matches. He sits yeah. on the bench in the treatment table, but all of a sudden it's gone quite on him as well. Yeah. Yeah. George Hall is a quality player, and we haven't yeah. seen either and if he can come back in that team for me he starts down the right I would go for a, what Eustace played the 4-2-3-1 I'd bring Sonic and Bealy back in front of the back four to protect him a bit and I'd ask Dembele Miyoshi and, um, and George Hall with we, we Stansfield down the middle on his own to just get at the opposition you can still play attacking football like that but you're just not putting your back four under as much pressure are you because and also, I'd stop this playing it out from the back as well because oh. it's, it's just not. It's just inviting us. Can't do it. Every, every time do we it. do, it all comes straight back at us, doesn't it? Every time, more or less. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere. This no. is what gets me. Like when, when if you if you're Wayne Rooney and you you know, like after every game, you must sit there and self reflect a little bit on what's gone on and and how you know how things were and stuff like that. Um, at what point do you go? This isn't working. As it, yeah. however much I want it to work, and however much my system is there for the players to learn, it's not working right now. And I got to pick up points because if I don't, we're going to further and further go down into trouble. Mm. So at what point you go right? I'm going to take three steps backwards. I'm still going to work with the players on doing the system we want to play, but I'm also going to put in the, the the baby steps again and really start to you know play the way that we suit our players you know clearing it from the back and defending and that sort of stuff because as, as Claire said earlier going forward we don't look bad we've got some really exciting players yeah. defensively we, it's a shake they look nervous they look uncertain they just they can't do the stuff that he's asking them to do so go back to normal let them kick the ball a little bit and then let's still play on the front foot and let's go and score some goals and enjoy it yeah, exactly. I, mean, Chris, well, I think it's, it's, it's worth noting, sorry, Paul, it's worth noting as well, a couple of people have passed the, the comments around, you know, the, the position and what Claire was saying, you know, that actually before the Huddersfield game, the team were playing equally as bad. And we all, I refer back to a couple of comments that have said, look at Norwich when we were completely demolished by a team that were not just underperforming at that point in time, but we're at their very lowest ebb. Now yeah, we look at the league. That- Hey, Norwich is another bogey ground, mate. I think the last yeah. time we won there, uh, Stern John scored. That's what, 21 yeah. years ago. Ooh, we look season, at the league, yeah. though. We're mm. seven points off the, the bottom three. Yeah. We're seven points off the top. Off a playoff spot. Yeah. yeah. I know. The league is just... I, I mean, you take out the top two. 
and there's absolutely nothing between everybody else. And, you know, uh, there's been a, a few people that have said, why sack him? You know, uh, and they were talking about, you know, the fact we, we, we've we got rid of people, we've not given them a chance, why sack him? There are others that are all like, no, he's got to go, he's got to go. I think we need to face facts after what we saw last week. And also, uh, I still go back to the fact I do believe there are some positives at this present moment in terms of, you know, who I think under a Eustace team that we'd have had 26 chances mm. going forwards and attacking opportunities against Blackburn? No. Uh, and I know we didn't put them away. I know we didn't even get close to half of those being put away. But at some point, it has to click. And when it when it clicks, that's when we'll see a difference. And right, let, let, let's put it out there. We go, the run now. we go the next two games, we win them both. How many people are going to still call for his head or are we all going to be just like we were with Eustace? Oh, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Can you say something on that? Sorry, guys. Um, you know, we're talking about being seven points to the top and seven points to the bottom. Now, from a personal point of view, um, after watching Wednesday and Saturday and, and, and mixed views, there was some good things, there was some real bad things. I'm not looking at the top. I'm more concerned about the seven points below me because I don't go to the games. I live in the States, as you know, so I don't get there. My parent, my dad goes, my brother goes, whatever, friends. Um, you go to the game now expecting probably not to win. So I think most fans, and I'm just, I may be saying some, something wrong here, but I think most Birmingham fans right now are more concerned about the seven points behind them than they are about the seven points in front. Mm. That's, that's, looking that's the concern. That's the concern. Yeah, you know? no, certainly, certainly the way it's gone so far and the body language of the players out there for me and, and you know, they just don't look confident to me. They don't look comfortable out there on the pitch playing. Um, it's the lack you know. of passion. That's what it is for me. I think mm -hmm. under Eustace, you knew that they wanted to play for him. You knew that they were they, they were together and they would always say that, the group, the group and everything else. And I just think that, you know, you, you don't see... You know, you don't see, like, Sanderson grabbing them and being like, come on. Like, you know, Man City yesterday after that pass that should have been mm. and how passionate they were and they were, like, wanting to win. Yeah. And what do we get? We get, oh, a little round of applause, thanks for coming, then go in. And I just yeah. think we've... the. I don't think anybody's going to be happy for the foreseeable future. I can't see. Even if we go on, like, a five and beat and run, I just don't think people like Rooney and I just think that people just aren't going to get behind him. Um, I just, I can't see where we go from here. Like, you know, we're going to Coventry. Oh, you know, am I going expecting a win? Like Mark said, I would take a draw right now. Literally oh, take a draw right now. Yeah. And then, you know, we've got some really tough games before January. We could be sliding either further and further down that's the difference you know how many have we got like five games or something before the new year yeah. something crazy and imagine we don't win any of those you know Cardiff yeah. they're playing quite well um, you know we've no, got like another bogey league. ground Cardiff yeah, yeah. Oh, great no, here, sorry great comment coming in here from Jason Hughes so we were an average 17th position team before Rooney. We are still an average 17th place team with Rooney, as the players are the same. We looked better offensively. So, sorry, scoring down. We look, we look better offensively, but now weaker at the back. So, keep working on the defence, and they will learn the role, and confidence will come. This said, the atmosphere seems... I can't... Sorry, comments keep going <laughs> off my screen. The, the, so, this said, the atmosphere seems so ap ap apathetic on the pitch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be honest, a lot of that is like Claire said. There's no obvious, there's no obvious bond between players and Rooney. There's no yeah. warmth. There's no. It's almost like they are, to some extent, sort of separated in in the, in the, their attitudes towards each other. Let's I don't know. A, I could be wrong. Let's just give it a bit more time. That's what I'll say. Let's give it a bit more time and see where we are in a couple of months. Mm. You know, I'm not yeah. saying. Well, well I, ju I just say one thing: if we win the next five games, right, my opinion of Wayne Rooney will not change, right. Mm. The only thing that will be different is I will have a decent Christmas, not sit and shit myself, <laughs> that we're going to go through our usual crap January because we always come, come unstuck in January. So by the end of February, we're in a relegation battle. We're already out of the cup. Nothing, 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 nothing to play for except staying away from relegation. If we win the next five games, we can at least relax and, and think, well, we're not going to go down. Uh, 
things are getting better, blah, blah, blah. And as I say, my opinion of Wayne Rooney won't change. Mm. But my, 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 my attitude to what's going on, I mean, I got, I, I didn't go on Saturday because I got stuck on the train the week before, didn't get home till midnight, had to get the missus out of bed to take me out and all this business. <laughs> so I just didn't feel like I wanted to travel by train. And there were strikes anyway. Mm. And I yep. sat out. In fact, no, I didn't. I, I, I lay in bed. I, sat me, I put the electric blanket on and watched the match in bed <laughs> with my electric yeah. blanket on. And I fell asleep. I fell asleep. Yeah, my, it was right. shocking. And then the commentator said, oh, it's great to see the cop seats in use again. Yeah, about a third of them. Yeah, because yeah, most of them were empty. And, and, and it's more depressing than having... No seats. I mean, empty seats. And, and, and behind the goal, the Gil Medic, that was even worse. That's been full up every week. Mm. Mm. And, and, and the, upper, the upper was closed, wasn't it, as well? Which didn't look... Uh, yeah. No, yeah, no, definitely. Co co come, sorry, Paul. Say, coming out afterwards, we did hear quite a few people say, um, not coming again, not for... There's one one bloke with his seven, like, little six or seven-year-old little boy, and he was like, nah, I'm not coming again, so not for a few months. And that's the sort of floating banner we, we're trying yeah. to sort of tie down. To come every week and it's, it's just been worse. Happen. It has been worse than this. Oh crikey! Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Today, yeah. It's been no. worse than this. What's Not happened is the off does. the field. Mm. Yeah, off the field's become better. On the field isn't great. I can't. Obviously, I like you know. I'm never going to try and miss a game, mm. but that's people's opinion the thing is is that I would love to have known what Tom Brady thought when he walked through mm. I would have loved to think see be a fly on the wall going what's this atmosphere compared to when I first yeah. came because mm -hmm. the atmosphere's dropped but it's I think awful. because we're not playing very well the atmosphere's gone down and mm -hmm. I don't know what it is at the moment we seem to drop really quickly but we need to kind of get behind them and you know like I've been negative this weekend and you know, but everybody's got everybody's got the you know the opinion, and they should be able to say their opinion. So if you don't want Rooney in, that's fine. If you don't, if you do want Rooney in, that's fine. If you're not happy with the performance, that's fine. But I think yeah. though that the problem is there's such a split between the fans at the moment. Yeah. When actually yeah. at one point it was we were in harmony, we were you know it was banter, it was great, the atmosphere was going. Oh, the at the moment gone, we've yeah. got none yeah. of that. It's totally gone agree. right downhill, and you've got people arguing over social media, people arguing in the stands. Yep. Mm. When we're supporting the same team, just accept each other's opinion and just, mm. you know, we've been through worse. If you do have an opinion, you're a, you're a Vile fan, so there you go. Yeah. You can't win. Yeah. But, yeah. At no. least this is the divide, actually, that's there between fans at this present moment. I, you know, I think even through the tough times, I've not known as much of a divide as what we have at the moment. Right. And part of that is mm. down to the decision on, on, on Wayne Rooney coming. I still go back to the fact that if he wasn't in a contract and signed in with a team in the summer, he'd have been here in the summer. All right? Yeah. Um, mm. So I, I don't think it matters one iota what the fans say or how they say it at this present moment. It would have happened. The thing is, we don't like what we're seeing on the pitch. Mm. What we should be doing is backing those players that are giving the effort. So... The JJ's what well, JJ is thriving at this present moment. He is really showing what he can do, uh, and, and there's a right smile from Claire because there's a few people around us in the Tottenham that that do not have the time of day at all for JJ, right? But actually, he is he is beginning to really show what he can do. He's going to get his opportunity. He needs to be in the team. I agree. Strange decision not to play him on Saturday. Very strange. Mm -hmm. But there is a, there's also others. You know, um, we've mentioned about Led going out the team, but Dramar, right? He looked great when he came on and he put in some fantastic balls throughout the game. And I think, again, he is actually improving at this present moment. Perhaps it's because the style of play that were at Leeds when he was there was very, very similar to what Rooney wants to do. Bielsa had a very, very similar game in terms of the way that he wanted to play. And so he is gonna he is gonna thrive for me. Efridge, I think, deserves a chance now. But also Dixon. Right? The kid's scoring for fun for the twenty threes. We've got to at some point give him his go and get him into the team. And you know, if there's a few of those youngsters that are coming through, give him a crack. 
these these players that week in week eight get in the team, right? They've got to they've got to earn a spot. We need to be in a position where he's not afraid to drop them and say, "Tough, you're not performing." So therefore, I'm giving you a spot up. You're going to fight for it to bring it back. That will then be the true reflection of whether they care where they are and, and if they want to do things. That also, for me, goes for Sanderson. Because I really do agree that he has dropped away. He has, yeah. Mm. Perhaps yeah. he needs to be Massively. dropped. Right? Yeah. We saw the best of Harley Dane when he was at the club after he'd been dropped. Do we need to do the same with our captain now and have a, have a change for a couple of games just to turn around and say, do you know what? You, you're not bigger than anybody else. We can do this and we will do it and mm. give the other kids a chance if we don't play them, we'll never know. And Rooney, for me, is one that's all for bringing the kids through. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, wa- I want to see that. I want to see these 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 lads getting the opportunity to go out and, and do stuff on the pitch. Get behind them. You know, we've just made two great contract signings with uh, Donovan and... Keller. Uh, Keller, thank you. And the Brandon Keller. You know, Brandon Keller on Monday when he gave us our, his little speech around what it was like in the academy yeah. really showed a guy that had got an adult head on a kid's shoulders and that's what we need to see. Liam Dayish said himself there are four or five players that he believes are ready. So if Liam Dayish believes they're ready and he can get that across to Rooney let's get them playing. Mm-hmm. Let's the, give them a go. Sorry Craig the legend that is Tony Wrightley Four positive from Saturday, seven points from the from the playoffs. Mm. Moved up one place in the table, clean sheet, and unbeaten at home in three. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Well, yeah. We, we, you know, we, we've all been dwelling on the other poor performances. They are positives, but the the problem is there's that many things that are going against us that we we just it's hard to to, to turn the tide. But I totally agree. Tony, Tony's Tony's right. We've got to look at the positives. Yeah. I hate to mm. say this, I hate to say this, but we're playing exactly the same way and the club, is a, it's like night and day off the field compared to back in 2017. And, you know, Steve Portman mentioned earlier that, you know, people are, are worried that the same thing might happen that happened in 2017, but we are playing the same type of football as what Zola did, aren't we? Rolling it out from the keeper and playing it out from the back and creating loads of chances. Um, but ultimately... You know, either drawing or losing more often than not, and conceding quite a lot of goals, and you know, not scoring enough. So you know, we we we, we were losing three one every week under Zola, weren't we? Or four two mm. again, or yeah. you know, so um, there were high scoring games, but ultimately we were on the wrong end of them, weren't we? And mm. this seems to have happened so far. What well, Tottenham about? did it though the weekend, didn't they? So they were under pressure, mm. and then at yeah. some point, the, the, even the the keeper just went, "I'm just going to hit this long." Yeah. And sometimes Rudy might just need to go, do you know what? I'm yeah. sorry, but I'm just going to hit this long. We've been under pressure for 10, 15 minutes. I'm just going to boot it long, especially when you got Jukovic up front. And, yeah. you know, when you got even Burke up front, you've got to yeah. hit sometimes. You've got to mix it up so that they're not used to always playing. You know, mm-hmm. just hit it long once in a while. Just see what happens. If you cause yeah. trouble, then do it more than once. Maybe some of the players need to start taking ownership because, you know, yeah. they're the ones on the mega money. They're the ones that, you know, like Long, will Long come back for Awu maybe because Sanderson's been worse since he's been out? You know, mm. Billick, would you change him for Sunjik instead and have a bit of an engine in there to break up the play quicker, to step in like he wants us to? Yeah. Mm. You know, there's there's certain things that you can change. But I agree, we've got to, we do have to look at the positives. I think the clean sheet is the main one because we have been shipping in goals. Yeah, but but I do talk- think it's the manner of the performance which upsets everybody and then it clouds everybody. Yeah, let's yeah. not forget though, that the club's been saved, obviously, you know, on the 13th of July this year. We were saved, weren't we? Because we, I mean, yeah. from what we heard last Price- month, from what we heard last Monday, you know, Craig and Chris, obviously, mm. it was... We wouldn't have been there. We, we, we've been saved, haven't we? Because we were we were only going to go one way, weren't we? Under the previous, uh... if, I think if they well, hadn't it's... took over, we would. I honestly don't think we'd have been here as a, as a club, or if we were, we'd be sitting rock bottom of the league with a minus points situation, not having the stands finished, and, and not being in the position where we are actually, dare I say, able to look forwards. Because at the moment, that's the thing we can do. We can look ahead. What's going to happen in the next six, 12 months? What's going to happen in the next two, four years? Mm. 
if they hadn't have come through the door and done what they did in July. And let's also not forget, I don't think it's it'd be on the realms of belief that had we have been relegated, they would not have come in. Mm. No, no. I mean, no. We, we've we've done that, and we we have we have got to move on. And sorry, sorry, Mark. Here, my uh, I overspoke you there. No, it's all right. It's good. I just was just saying about the question last week that Paul said. You know, when he asked us about the you know out of ten, I'm still an eight out of ten, nine out of ten for the excitement off the field. That's don't change. The problem is that the, the excitement on the field gets lower and lower each week. And my biggest concern is that if you do get relegated, um, not saying we are going to, but if that's the case that we do go down, then how does that excitement change when you're in League One? Because you don't get the player, you don't buy the players that you you're looking at now. Like Rooney's Rooney will get players, but he's only going to get players if they're playing in a good standard of league. I don't think he's going to drop. They're going to drop players to things like League One. So right now. Yes, the excitement off the field is is great, and the future for us is great. I think off the field, but on the field where it really matters, that's my biggest concern. And what I don't want to see is a mistake happening, um, and we do get relegated, and then we're back in a you know a situation where we we're trying to fight to get back into the championship. These guys have come in to get the to get Birmingham as a team, a club, a city in the biggest league in the world. that That's what they want. You know, they, they, they've, they've said this. They think Rooney's the man to do that. And that's why they brought him through the door. Unfortunately, in the first five months that he's been here, it's going the other the other way. Um, we are going to give him a chance. They're going to give him a chance. I think he's got to have some transfer windows. He's got to stamp his own authority on it. I just hope and pray that once he does that, we do start to, you know, be a bit more positive on the field to match the excitement off it. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll get relegated. I think the, I'll tell you why, because I think if we get to February, March, and, and we are flirting around that bottom three, then I think they will have a decision to make, and they'll, they'll do what's best for the club and probably make that change. But I'd like to think that Rooney can turn this round. You know, he can bring some better players in in January, and we can start to, you know, improve, I'll say. But between now and then, like I've said at the start of the show, we need to do something different to try and get some points on the board. Yeah. Come on. Uh, again, again, about <clears throat> Monday. Now, I, I have said, did anybody ask that when when, when Craig said that uh, they wouldn't have come if we'd have got relegated? Yeah, no. that's pretty obvious. What are they going to do when we are relegated? Well, Has anybody asked that question? I don't are think we will get relegated. We're not going to get relegated. Will, we, we, we are too good for that. Okay, you we're say, just you're annoyed saying that we're going to be 17th yeah. again. That's the yeah, problem, yeah. is that people were on the p- promotion bus, already got their ticket to Wembley in the playoff final about uh, two months ago. And the expectation was so high that everybody's now being put down back to earth <laughs> Where and we are where we will probably be if we are seventeenth in revenue and we are seventeenth in spending and everything else, we will end up seventeenth. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to yeah. get relegated. We're too good for that. Yeah. But yeah. something needs to change. But we're not. We're not going to. Why we? Why we think we deserve the right to be in the playoffs? Just because. No. No. We've, we've been taken over. We've spent some money. We've got no chance. Get, like if we get the playoffs, I'll be shocked. And we'll have I, to I, do I, 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 I'll just be happy with mid table. Said that from day one. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 no. I don't disagree with what you're saying. What I'm saying is, if if Mr. Mr. Wagner was on this program now, I'd say, what are you going to do if if the worst comes to the worst and we get relegated? What are you going to do then? Mm. And that's 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 the thing that is 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 bothering me. Uh, we had all this positivity about off off the pitch, and then the following night we go and get thumped at Blackburn. Mm. Uh, and I was fortunate; I didn't see the the Monday night stuff until Thursday morning, so it actually cheered me up. You know, I, well, I, I I'd seen what you'd seen, but it was after the match, not before. If I'd have, if I'd have seen what you seen, and then gone to Blackburn and got thumped, I. All that goes out the window. I'm not interested in all that. Where's the three points coming from next time, next game? Where are we going to get three points from? Yeah, Alan, Alan can... worst case scenario, and, and we do get relegated, I, 
I can't see. I can't. They're not, they're not going to. They're not going to go. I, I mean, no, if you, you, I, of course if you, not. If you hear about, if you heard how much they've invested in this club, it's just, it's phenomenal. It's stuff that you don't, we don't hear about. They're not going to. They're going to stick with it. It's going to be long term. They said it's going to be long term. Yeah. We've got to say as as fans. Go on, Paul. Sorry. I'm just going to say, Craig. Sorry, mate. We've just got. We've just got to ride this season out. Hey? Kevin Kelly saying, yeah. "Where's the chance coming from?" Um, I don't know what they've got to spend, but I'd like to think they'll have something. They did, um, they did say there will be there will be something in January, but yeah. but we've got to wait till the summer. Basically, it did, it did, it did, yeah, that's what Gary Cook said, wasn't it? He yeah. said that uh, mm. there will be funds in January, but the yeah. big the big um, you know changes will come in the summer. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a mass clearing. There's no we, dating we, that in the summer. Mm. Absolutely. With, with, with respect, with respect to our new owners, the Chinese have been saying that for ten years. Oh, we've got to ride this season out and then we'll do this. Ride this season out, then we'll do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's the disappointing thing. With I know these people are a different breed to the Chinese owners, but at the moment, that's only saying the same things as the Chinese owners used to say yeah, about what's going on in the field. Their hands are tied. You know, we, we didn't lose the players. I, it's probably fair to say that had it had gone through earlier, we obviously had the delay till the 13th of July. Mm. If we if it had gone through earlier, then I actually believe some of the faces we have at the club now wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, and, I think, and, I don't, I'm sorry, Craig, I don't even think you can put these owners and the old owners in the same sentence, can you? No, I don't think so. You know, um, we've, got to, we've got to watch this as fans, that we don't alienate Knighthead. No. Mm. You know, we, they, they, these guys... You know, we, we said it last week, Paul, we've said it again tonight. These guys didn't just save the situation at the moment. They saved the club. Mm -hmm. They yeah. saved the club. And from probably non-existence. Mm -hmm. We'd be ready in that, I, I, wouldn't we? would be ready in that. That's who yeah. we'd be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, but but I, think, I think that that's that was the answer I was looking for, uh, Craig. Mm -hmm. Are we frightened of upsetting them? Is that is that a is that a genuine if 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 the fans turn against them, are they gonna shut up shop and go home? You know, well, you don't I, would, I, I don't think they will, no. but it, I I wouldn't I wouldn't blame them. Yeah. These these guys have come through the door and in the space of less than six months, they've put ten million pounds worth of working capital into the club yeah. to get the training ground and the facilities in the stadium up to scratch. They have openly admitted that they would love to do more in the transfer market, mm. but can't because their hands are tied. I understand that. I believe that in January we will see some shocks. I think some players that we do not expect to go may well go. Um, I think we will see some of those players that are on loan to us with a view to purchase. We might buy them to allow us to go into the loan market because that's the only area that I can see us doing any any decent business in 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 January, but I I firmly not just after Monday, but from what you've heard as the follow-ons and everything else, I firmly believe that they have the club, not just the club but the city at their heart, and that they will do things to take it forward. Uh, Saturday, right? We had people like the Lord Mayor of Birmingham at St Andrews. Now, I know it seems really daft to have the Lord Mayor there, but, you know, you get the Lord Mayor's back in, and all of a sudden, if we want to go and do things like the speculation and rumour of a new stadium, right, we've got to get these people on site, we've got to work with them to show that we're not just there, and these owners are not just there to run a football club. Mm. To, like that, that's music in my ears. And, and we all know that's going to happen it, as well. It will yeah. happen. Yeah. 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 It's music to my ears because... Yeah. Even under the Sullivans and Golds, <clears throat> that's that's one thing they could never do. They could never get our city council on site. Mm -hmm. so if, they, if they if they're recognising that problem, well, you know that that's a big tick. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wagner before the game big. being in the stands was another mm -hmm. big thing. Mm -hmm. I don't that think is superb. I don't think people's issue is the owners. It's more obviously Rooney and results on the pitch at the minute, isn't it? That's people's problem, mm -hmm. and that's why they're booing at the end of the game when you draw nil nil at home to Rotherham. You know, we're all going down there and obviously we've sat there freezing our what's it's off for a couple of hours right. and we're coming away with a nil nil at home to Rotherham and to be fair to Rotherham, they I thought they were the better side, weren't they, on the day? They were looking well, to be honest to be honest, Paul, their confidence grew. 
Yeah. If I was a Rotherham fan, I'd be well chuffed with that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. their, their confidence was seeping through at the end, and yeah, they could well have won it. I think you know, I was just about to say, I was about to say that as well, Paul. Like as soon as you, before you said it, like it's not that nobody's slagging the owners off. I think everybody understands no. what the owners have done, um, and 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 in the future, like like Claire said, I think last week or the week before, they've got a ten year plan. Wayne Rooney's not going to be at Birmingham for ten years. No. So at some point, he's going to succeed or he's going to be a mistake or whatever he's going to be. He's going to leave his job. He's going to go somewhere else or he's going to get fired or they're going to bring somebody else in. So the frustration and listen, the things they're doing for the city is fantastic. No, you know, in all due respect, the Lord Mayor being at the game is not going to win us a game. And I think the frustration of the, of the, of the fans right now is that is what's on the field and who's the leader on the field? Not of anything about the leadership off it. You don't have one, Marvin. You... That's the scary thing. Yeah. Uh, it, nobody stands out as a leader on the pitch. That's nobody no leader. seems to have the balls to grab somebody by the shirt and go, what the f***ing hell are you doing? Mm. Yeah. You know, because, Mark, you, you summed it up beautifully when you said people couldn't do a two-yard pass on Saturday. I have mm. not been to a game in ages where the passing on the field was that bad. And yeah, you can you can say you can accept some mistakes, but some of it was just ridiculous. Mm, right? yeah. And it does need somebody to get by the scruff of the neck and just go, do you know what? If you don't like the way you're playing, do something about it. Either step up and continue to try. They've got to be learning something. Have to be. You can't do all this and not learn something, right? So... Try your absolute hardest, and every fan that's there, if you try, will not get disgruntled and boo. But the sheer fact that on Saturday, to me, those players didn't turn up. They did not do what they needed to do. Just remember as well, Leeds um, Leeds drew against Rotherham. Rotherham drew against Leeds the week before, and actually they came back and showed a little bit. Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday drew with, Le- with Leicester in the week as well. Yeah. 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 Steve Corbin's put on the message board, I blame the players for making the mistakes they are making. Learning yeah. more in training will improve the results on the pitch. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, we are, with some people, square peg round hole. But <laughs> we also know they can do it. And I'll go back to that Ipswich comment. They showed what they could do against Ipswich. We don't ask for miracles. We're not going to get it. With Birmingham City, we don't do miracles. No, right? no, we no. have to fight and break our backsides for absolutely everything. And as fans, that's what we do to make sure we're there. Yeah. Mm. But all we need is the players to do exactly the same. Show us some heart. Show us how much it hurts them. Because yeah. at the moment, I don't get that either. I think the fans... I, well, fans- yeah. I was going to say, I think, I think at the moment, the, the fans are, uh, are a bit of a problem, aren't they? There's a, there's a massive split. You just look at the um, comments mm. on YouTube and Facebook... It's it's a huge split, and yeah. what do we do about that? So when you've got players who have been there in our really bad patch, you know, we know the players, mm-hmm. they're still there. So it's lovely you can get as many players in as you like, but if the core of your side are players that you know have been in the sorrows part, mm-hmm. does that make a difference? In, in the red, because- red, absolutely. red and not the green. No, you know what I mean, yeah? yeah. Like, do, do, do you know what I'm trying to say? Is the fact yeah, that, yeah. you know, I'm not going to name any players, but we know the ones that have been there for a while and they're still there. And, yeah. you know, will somebody come in for them? No. Will they run down their contract? Yes. And, you know, are, is is that a burden on them as well? I don't know. Like, is that a problem as well? Um, well, you know, like you know, like Gary Gardner, for example, mm. and like Roberts, for example, yeah. who can't play this way, but yeah. they're there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Great comment from Lee Anthony, and he's pretty much saying what I said when we employed Rooney. Bringing in a manager with no track record was a massive risk. Mm. Plenty out there available who can who can make a, a fist of it. So yeah, there is totally. there's plenty out there available that could make yeah. a fist of it. But Rooney is the manager now, and. I'm certainly going to support him. You know, let's just get behind him and, and see if we can improve. I don't, yeah. Just on that, I don't think I, I looking at. I'm watching him on the TV every week, but I, it doesn't seem like any of them want to play for him. The, the, and you know what? 
there's there's probably reasons behind that and i I'd, you question it in any job if you didn't have the belief of your leader or you was you know called out publicly each week by that person or he's not the type of coach that Eustace was when he'll go on the field at the end his arm, arm around the shoulder it's hugs it's that sort of stuff you know Dion Sanderson for me who's our captain he seems the furthest away from Rooney than any of the other players. So how do you have a leader on the field that clearly doesn't agree with what you're doing on the side? I no, think it's, yeah. it's a massive, massive gap between what the players are doing and and what the manager's doing. And yeah, the professional footballers, listen, move your ass, play for the badge, all of that stuff, I get the argument. But the fact is, as well, I don't think they have the belief and the trust in the leader that they have in front of them. Mm-mm. Steve Portman's asking how many points did Eustace pick up in his first eight games? I don't know the answer to that without looking, but I know that we won first... We've, made, we've had four under this guy, so it can't be many. No, no, no. But anyway, last week we started off our top five ever Blues goals, didn't we? And <clears throat> started from the top and working our way down. So number one... The, the winner, I'll say, was John Gale's over a kick at Wembley. Mm-hmm. So I now want people to vote for number two, please. So what is the second best ever Blues goal behind jo- John Gale's over a kick at Wembley? And Al, I know you went on last week, but this is all about the quality of the goal. You know, not just what it meant, but the actual quality of the goal. Jerome. Jerome at Liverpool. I think Cammy yeah. wins. Or Larson. Larson at Spurs. Which, which okay. Larson? Larson Spurs, because for me, it's Larson Chef Wednesday. Chef Wednesday, well. yeah. Uh, Lily's gone for Cadiz's goal. Uh, okay. Guards versus West Ham. We've got. Yeah. Are we are we talking about the uh, the situation in which the goal was scored, or are we talking about the technical uh, co- excellence yeah. of the goal? Technical quality of the goal. I mean, I'm going to throw John Torrell in there against Ipswich. Yeah, that was a beauty, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, on YouTube, uh, the fun never stops. Has gone for Seb Larson, Spurs. Yeah, I still, yeah. I still think the Brian Hughes one. That I, I can't remember who it was against, but when he flicked it, flicked it over his head and spun and and what, volleyed. Is that the Watford? What? It's the game yeah. after the cup final. Well, yeah, it's Friday like, night after the cup final. Like Dennis, Dennis Burkamp esque, wasn't it? He just yeah. flicked it and spun. Yeah. Um, but I would say, for me, looking at the two, look, looking at Larson's goal against Spurs and Cammy's goal against Liverpool, Jerome's is. Jerome for me was straight down the middle. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a great strike. But if you watch Larson's, it was top corner. Like no goalkeeper in the world would ever get to to that thing. And it was also like the ninety third minute of the game in he managed his first game as well. I've got one. And a winner. Mark, I've got one that's completely forgotten. Sorry, Al. Uh, one that everyone's completely forgotten. Does anyone remember Emmy Hughes at Middlesbrough? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. What a strike, guys. Uh, and on the message board, there's there's a proper mixture that's coming in. However, there's a quick run for uh, Capo at Chelsea has been mentioned a few yeah. times. Good show. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Larson against Spurs. We go full south against yeah. Tottenham. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, Tom Richardson has said uh, uh, a bit Bogle versus Stoke in 2018. Celebrations are good, that is. I remember the celebrations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Fox's um, point. We lost that game at Middlesbrough 3 1 when Emmy scored that well. It'd be good to pick a goal in a game that we won, wouldn't it, rather than lost? Yeah. Mm. Uh, another one to put into the equation is uh, he's dealing out a bowler at Spurs. You know, we've. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a goal that was. You know, so I, I, I'll give you another Dele, Dele Adi bowler goal at Man City where he ran after the length of the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what, yeah. And what, what a winner! Of, you know, a few times to be fair. That's a great goal. Remember, yeah. remember, remember, Peter Unlove as well against Crew at home when he ran all the way from the halfway line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's another one. Yeah, I said last week. I said last week the uh, Dominguez one as well against Hull when he finished yeah. with the chip. Yeah, mm. and he, do, he yeah. did it at the baggies. He did it at the baggies as well, didn't he? Unlove he scored a good one at the baggies as yeah, well. Yeah, for yeah, a, yeah. The three one. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's yeah. he's a good one uh, for sheer relief. Darren Carter's penalty. <laughs> Bentner's header against Wolves from the Good corner. Side. Good one yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dukovic's uh, header. We've also had uh, Kiftenveld's volley against Derby. We've yeah. had Kenny Lowe again mentioned by Anthony Lowe, Ray, yeah. Blackpool, which was a great goal. Uh, Michael Kelly, the Granger free kick against Man U. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. yeah. yeah. What about yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't he at half time? Kevin Francis as well against Leeds in the, Lee. in the card. Yeah. yeah. What about um? Oh, what about Omar Bogle against Stoke? Yeah. 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 Magoma, Magoma as well got a couple of beauties, didn't he? I think he got mm. one in that game as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Handiani score a few and do Gary. Yeah. Some of theirs were from free kicks were decent. I think they're good against, against Charlton. Yeah, he's back heel at Charlton. The back heel at Charlton. Yeah. 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 Crap. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Stephen, yeah, yeah, Stephen, yeah. Stephen Corby on YouTube has gone for Francis versus QPR. No contest, he says. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's got better ones than that, though, Trevor. I promise mm. you. Yeah. 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 Well, I, know, I, know it's only, I know it's only a friendly, but does anyone remember the Cotcher one against Leicester two years yeah. ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was the season they went on to win the league as well. Yeah, Leicester. yeah. That was a beautiful um, one. Yeah, yeah. David Courier said Martin O'Connor versus Man City in that game of the great comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah somebody said, uh, sorry, I'll just bring it back up on the screen. Andy Daniel said that Pedersen's header from outside the box at Brentford. Brentford, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but that was another game, weren't it? Where we had one, I think we had one attempt on goal, didn't we? One attempt. We <laughs> second, second minute of the game as well, wasn't it? Yeah. This is so yeah, yeah. mixed this evening. Uh, it's yeah. so, so tight in terms of, of who's there. You know, keep, keep them coming because this is this is probably going to be the closest. And probably dictate the uh, the third, second and, uh, sorry, third, fourth and fifth as well. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Craig, have we got anything else to go over? Squad game or number game or anything like that? I, I have got uh, a squad number game uh, well, for, for this evening. So... <laughs> um, we're going to do the normal, so we'll talk about the players first of all, and then we'll go on to the goal scoring afterwards. So, can I, uh, can I play? No. no. You're barred. Oh. It's not my ball, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I'm looking at the two basements. <laughs> Sorry, it was a <laughs> delayed laugh, that was. Um, and <laughs> what I'm looking for is uh, the players who had squad number 25, and also, to really test your knowledge... Squad player number 34 from that what season. Seasons, what season is this? I think Chris laughed when you said the year. So it's 2002, 2003. Look, Chef wow, Ray, 25. No, I, know, I know the 25s. If you want me to yeah. say, oh, let, let everybody else go first. I know the 25s as well. How many 25s do you know? I know two, two of them. There's three. Okay. There's three just to make it interesting. Who, who, you, got, who you got, Mark, uh, Paul? So I've got. Um, I, shall I say, or shall I give people a chance? I'm what thirty four. I've, I've got Matthew Upson as one of the twenty fives. Yeah, and I got Chris Powell as the other one. Yeah, got uh, Chris Powell. Not Chris Powell. No. Daryl Powell. Daryl yeah. Powell. Daryl yeah. Powell. Yeah. Chris Powell did play for twenty fives. Daryl Powell and Matthew Upson. Who's the third? Who and Fernand Coley was it? No. Mm. <laughs> twenty five. I don't remember another twenty five. And then the other squad the number. Part- is 34 uh, and this this one is going to be out there to, to the board as well I'm going to be interested to see whether anybody gets how many was it? it's not Trees or Luntala is it no nope. or the other Frenchman no nope. 34 oh, 203 Tebley no Tebley no <clears throat> Tebley was 26 you see we saw I, him I think I remember who he is but I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't be able to pronounce or spell his name because it's about that big <laughs> I am really impressed with the fact that you actually know that. So yeah, number thirty-four was Polish, and it was uh, better. I think it's pronounced Swarovski. Oh yes, yeah, somebody just put it up. Yeah, it's a yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. P- but the other oh, twenty-five, the other twenty-five, is it Stephen Clements? No, it's not Stephen Clements. Oh, was it Jovan Krovsky? No. Stephen Clements was number 32. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because we signed Upson and Clements in the same window, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we did. But then we, we, start, we must have started the season then with Daryl Powell as 25. Mm. And, then, we the left back. Wait, and then he went and Upson came and he was 25. That's that was right. the, left, the, the left backer we signed at the same time from Ipswich, Tottenham, whatever. Clapham. 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 Yeah, Clapham, Clapham was... Uh, no, Clapham was 23. Mm. 23. What about, what about Muzzy, is it? Oh, that's a good shout from Mark Brooks, that is Paul Furlong. 
Uh, it is Paul Furlong. Oh, well, yeah. 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 great knowledge. Wow. Well done. Well done was, he, was he still in the squad then, was he? We still had him, did we? When we got yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. took nine off him and put him in that. So he must have started the season then, and then he went, and Daryl Powell had his shirt then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. can't remember where he went from us, though, Furlong. Where did he go back to QPR? Uh, what have gone to QPR? His, lad, his, lad, his lad went there, what? didn't he? Yeah. Lad yeah. Back, yeah. Didn't he? Right back. Yeah. Right back, he's now, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And number 23, any, uh, we've mentioned Jamie Clapham, but there's one other number 23. Does anybody know the other 23 from that season? Matt Burley. Who? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matt Burley. A good friend Who? of the show. B-I-R-L-E-Y. Oh, Sadler. Matt Sadler? No, it's not Matty Sadler. Oh, he won 30, I thought Sadler, did he? Number 30, yep. Yeah. Painter. Marcus Painter. It's not Marcus Painter either, no. Um, 23. Can you give us the answer and we'll take it from there? <laughs> <laughs> Mark's asked him about merchandise on many occasions. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's everybody. Is that Mark? Mark, 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 Jerry Gill. Jerry Gill. Get Jerry. Jerry Gill. Yeah, good, Jerry. good. Well done, Mark. Well done. And that, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, what was squad number guy? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll have to try and think about how we can vamp this up a bit more, aren't we? Yeah, make it exciting. Yeah. Get somebody else to do it. Yeah. Somebody else. We need to get we need to get us through the kill sort of game when you know players go through the houses. And, you know. what, what's in the box? Yeah. Okay. So oh, so, so yeah. Box? So we're going to have a, a bit of a running competition here for, till the end of the um, end of the show. Uh, I'm just trying to get it up. So what's in the box? It is topical. I'll just tell you that now. It is topical. I'll just get it up. Here's the box. It's the original. The original box. What's in the box? You got till the end of the show. And uh, we will pick somebody, a winner. We'll Any win clue? A, we'll win a prize. Is it street food? Anybody Cook can have a go. Pie in the box. Can I just say, nobody on the show here knows what's in the box. Oh, do you? what it is. No. Yep, you have do we have a clue or not? Yes, yes, yes. 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 No, you feel? I'm sorry. Uh, no, delighted. Forget that, forget that. Yes. Uh, we have to ask questions, though, please. So is it, is it sharp? Is it sharp? It's not sharp. Is it blue? Uh, some of it. Can you frame it? If you want to. Be a small fry, Mark. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> is it old or new? Ah, oh, wow. Oh, that is a great question. Shall I play uh, this at work? I'm you? gonna say <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna say it's this might be a massive clue. Old. I think I know what it is. All right. Why is it clear? No, don't say if you think you know what it is, don't wait till <laughs> okay, the end because I want people to have a go at this. Okay. I'll text you. Any more is questions? Is it edible? Isn't it? Is it edible? Um, no. Well, does it smell? Does it smell? Oh no! Does it make a noise? Uh, you know what? I don't think I've ever heard it make a noise. Can you Must pick it up? Probably too heavy. So it's heavy. It don't make a noise. And it's old. And yeah. it's old. Not my brother then. Has, your, <laughs> has, it gone down, has it gone out the window now, Claire? You, was your suggestion? All, all I can now? say is, yeah, definitely Claire's yeah. things out the window. Is it? Ah, okay. Yeah, she's better. Uh, is it metal? It's not metal. No, no. I'll, is I'll it go. made of pottery? It's not. It's not made of pottery. No. Uh, oh, Ray said, "Does it smell?" Uh, three points. Season ticket. No. Rooney's contract. No. Uh, blues time. <laughs> I can, I can, I'm looking through a few of them now, and one person's got it right. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, but we can come back to that. I don't, okay. I, I, I don't want to give too many clues out, so we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's move on to predictions for Friday night, then I'll start with you, Claire. <laughs> um... I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to take a 2 1 win, but I can't see it and I'm just praying because I'm going to be there. And I paid you're 37 pounds. You're, you're, you're voting with your heart instead of your head. Yeah, yeah, well, after paying 37 pounds while it's on TV and I'm going to freeze, I hope we do win. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's horrendous, isn't it? That price really is yeah. awful. Even the, even the Cov fans are stunned at that price, to be fair. That's crazy. You going, yeah. Rob? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's that, and it's that away game within walking distance. So yeah, I'll be there. You can actually go in his room. Picture, Mark. I uh, <laughs> sorry, Mark. Um, I, I I think the Cov fans are licking their lips at work. To be honest, you know they're, they're all you know they're, they're all confident. Um, I'm going to say a, 
A nil nil. I'll take a nil nil. I'll bite your hand off for a nil nil. Okay. Mark Meredith? I was going to go nil nil as well, I think. And that's, again, that's me hoping. I think we, if I was going to say <laughs> with my head, probably a loss, but I'm, for my heart, I'm going to go take a draw and get out of there quickly. Yeah. Craig? Uh, Oh, I'm going to be real positive. We're going to we're going to sneak it. We're going to do we're going to do it two one. Okay, Al. I just hope I get home on the train. Um, <laughs> nil nil. Nil nil. That's, Chris? and that's yes. that's that's with the heart. It's not it's, the head. It's it's a derby. It's going to be drab, isn't it? So I'm going to go for a four nil Blues. Yeah. <laughs> with my head, with, with with my head two one Coventry. Unfortunately, with my heart three nil Blues. I actually, I actually got a prediction right against Sheffield Wednesday because I never predict we're going to score a goal. We, we're going to concede a goal. But I did actually say 2-1 against <coughs> Sheffield Wednesday. So that's the first and probably the only one. Yeah. There was a, a question raised earlier on around Eustace's first eight games in charge and how many points we took during that I've actually, I've actually had the details sent to me it was poor 16 I would say no you think what 16 16 yeah no win now 12 about, 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 about 10 10 points I'll say about 8 Mr Meredith you're holding up the right number yeah. in the oh, first 8 games under John Eustace five. we took 5 points they were a draw at Luton Luton. Luton are in the oh, Premier League. I'm not talking about this year. This is, this is in Eustace's first games in oh, charge. Okay. Yeah. Not oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, not we took 0-0 at Luton. Yeah. We Huddersfield at home 2-1. We then lost away uh, in uh, it was the League Cup game, but 4-2 at Norwich on penalties. We lost away at Cardiff 1-0. We drew at home 1-1 to Watford. We lost away 1-0, uh, sorry, at home to Wigan. We lost away 2-0 to Rotherham. Yeah. And we lost away, uh, sorry again, sorry, at home again, 2-1 to Norwich. So we took five points out of the first eight games. Yeah. Everybody, again, refers back to Eustace being back as manager. And that can only just show that actually comparisons can't be made. Um, but hey, we're going to go on the positives again. Um, Chris, any more guesses on the uh, what's in the box? Uh, no, but if the panel want to, want to uh, fire, fire away some more, um, what they think, do they want a few more clues? You know, fire is away. it valuable? Is it valuable? Uh, probably to a lot of people, yeah. Is it a kebab? Ooh, close, no. <laughs> could, you spend, could, could you spend it? No, you can't spend it, no. Is it priceless? Uh, oh, now that's another good question. To a lot of people, it... Definitely is priceless. Is it related to St Andrews? It certainly is. It's topical. Uh, it's topical. I think I might know. Uh, okay. Okay. Go on, Mark. Ask me for a clue. I think is it from the old one of the old stands? No. Okay, maybe I don't know then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, what do we all think about <laughs> us getting hull in the cup? Uh, <laughs> oh, Rikey had. <laughs> Bloody boring. Well, that's a nice ball. Couldn't have gone with a whole draw for that. Another can bogey. I, you, I, I, it took me ages to cut none. The, 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 the teams were shrinking on the screen as they were still left in. And we got down to the last four game, four, four ties. And every other team bar Hull and Birmingham were in the south. I could have got Maidstone, Plymouth. I could have got to all of them easy. And I'm praying, I'm praying for, I'm praying for either Sutton or Maidstone away and we get bloody hole bloody oh. hole <laughs> no, yeah. couldn't have been worse it's, it's not even a word he's boring it's two days trip from here I'm, you to I'm glad we haven't got a Premier League team the way we're playing anyway <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no. I, was, I was dreading to be honest Clay, I was dreading getting them all the road because of the men here no. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, is it um, no Brummy in the box because he's been kidnapped and had Botox and been to America. <laughs> hey, what do you mean America? Why do you say America? Oh, oh, the American time. owners have decided to change Bo Brummey and Bell to something that I, I am horrified at. I can tell you. Donald can... Trump. Very, very we should all do. We should all do an impression of what Bo and Bell look like. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it Bo Brummey? Stop doing it now, Mark. 
Is it Bob Bromwich uh, here? The, I, what I can tell you is there are three people now on the shout box that have got it right. Is it? Is it not Bob Bromwich here? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, deflate. It's not a deflated football, is it? It's not. No, I've got one behind me though. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's a piece not. of the pitch. It's not a piece of the pitch. Is it? Piece of the ground. Yeah. It's not a piece of the ground. Three people have got it right on the shout box. Three people have got it right on the shout box, and even people on the panel have got it right. Have we? Yeah, huh? but I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you at the end. You got it right. I'll tell you. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> wow, the sea or something. Can you describe it? <laughs> it's like saying, "Give me the lottery numbers now." If only. So one of us got it right. Yeah. I'm the new Rome, so you're good. I'm out of here. Chris, a lot of people are asking for the last fifteen, but. Uh... Oh, no, no, we're not. We're, we're we're giving it a rest the last fifteen at the moment, and uh, we might resurrect it. But it's just it's just got a bit boring. You want to roll friends in the box? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, they got no exist. friends. Oh, oh, I got. Is it? Uh, yeah, is it? Uh, what was that? Is that again? Is it? Does it rattle? Oh, it rattles. A badge. It's a tin. <laughs> <laughs> in what? <laughs> Lots of, I mean, you've got to think about it. Lots of things can rattle. It's not. Uh -huh. It's not a massive rattle. It's not. It's not a blues badge, is it? It's not a blues badge. No. Is it a Ledger Warsaw badge? No. Oh, should have thought of that. Ledger Warsaw Ooh. badge. Ledger. No. It's not a biro. No, no. No. My head hurts now. Can we just tell everyone what it is? Okay. Should we tell everybody what it is? Uh, and. It better be good now, Chris. We've been waiting ten minutes to work it out. You got it spot on, Claire, earlier. It is, in fact, a oh, well, wonderful Beau Brummer. I don't know if you can see that. Ah. Okay, I see. Yeah. I win. What do I win? It's the old Beau Brummer. Yeah. You win a So no, the winner, the I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick... You win the new Beau Brummer. <laughs> yeah. it's a one... it's a no, worst... thank you. <laughs> it's, a worst... it's a worse transformation than Simon Cowell, isn't it? It's all for yeah. the <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, no. sometimes if it's not broken, like, the amount of people with, like, tattoos and how iconic oh. they are. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <gasps> I don't get why, why change it. Like, I don't... I don't get it. There's no need to change it, surely. No, no. Go on, Mark. Get your get your tattoo. Right, especially, we, especially who's had just had tattoos four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, nobody told me. Excuse me. Your leg up. There you go. Yeah, I got it. I think we got him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Has, has, yeah. has that particular bro Beau Brummer you showed got ears? It has, yeah. He's one. He's oh, I got it right then. He's the one with ears, yeah. <laughs> I got it right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In, in a way, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. In a way, yeah. Oh, well. So, yes. I'll, so, so I'm, I'm with Claire. I'm like, why change it? And yeah, and why? it doesn't even look anything like no. original Beau Brummer or anything like that. Now, I've... I've used I've actually used the mascot suit before. I took it to my son's birthday party once when I worked at Blues. And the head is separate to obviously the body. So change the body, put the new kit on, keep the head, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. the head yeah. slightly, but at least make it look like it. I couldn't believe it up from work. I could literally see everyone going, What's going on? What's going on? I looked at the picture and I yeah. generally thought it was a joke. I, I yeah. Did, yeah, it, it looks like a what though. It, it, yeah. like it looks like a doll. How long has the person underneath it had to wear the same thing? Maybe it was smelling of old sheds, like oh, the flag. God, yeah, but do you but remember he got kidnapped? It was all around the bars in Birmingham for the <laughs> yeah. head. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He would have never got it back. <laughs> now, there's an idea for charity. Yeah. Yeah, I'd wear it for charity. No, Get let's, me no let's kidnap him. Kidna Come on, guys. <laughs> let's kidnap him for charity. Yeah. Yeah. Do we think um, we need to change the tamper when the team comes out? Or are we still happy with that? And that goes out to our viewers as well. We need oh, Chris's song. I would change the music. Yeah, yeah have, have, have our song, yeah. I think, yeah. Change the yeah. time for it. Yeah. yeah. Let's have a bit of reggae coming out to it, you know. Yeah. I would yeah. change the whole music. I think I, when you go to, like, I think Watford, Middlesbrough, some of these places, it's like having a party before you start. Mm. And yeah. you get to the whole ground going. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, and I've always gone, oh, I love blues to be like that. And we're just I very look... samey. <laughs> I, I, okay. I would like to see a new thing. Go on, Al. 
I said I would like to hear uh, Chris's theme, the, the yeah. theme for this show, it's leading, yeah. leading the South. I think it's yeah. it's so catchy and so uplifting. Uh, it would get it would get the crowd rocking, yeah, or swaying yeah, at least. Because yeah, a lot of people, I did, I, I, they've, they've got new, sorry, Mark, they've got this new mix now, haven't they? Before the game, and you know, it, it, it's good from when Mister Blue Sky comes in, but everyone that's tunes prior to that, everyone's moaning around me. Mm. Mm. Steve Borman said, "Obviously, we've got a new sound system and lighting incoming, so that'll change things." But yeah, I think time. coming out onto the pitch, though, I agree. We need. I love, first of all, love the fact that they play the original version of Keep Right On once we're on the pitch. I think yeah. that is spot on right before yeah. the game. Um, apart from the fact that they kicked off before they got to the end of the song on Saturday, which was a bit of a disappointment. But mm-hmm. no, the intro, we, we do need something to come onto the pitch with that's different. And if we have got super whizzy, flashy lights at the same time, you know, you want something that's upbeat and something that's really going to get get people uh, get keep people going. So. Uh, I'll put roll out the barrel there. That that will get people going. <laughs> so is, the, is the girl is the girl Merrick upper closed because of the new screens? Is that is that the reason? Oh, I think it's sort of yeah. the um, the lift. It's, it's I believe that there's the screen side of it, but also there is some refurbishment going on. Yeah. So I think uh, there are you know as was highlighted to us on our tour round on Monday, the lift basically they have to have an engineer on site because they know it's going to break down. So they have they have uh, engineers there for the lift. I think there are there are issues with the uh, drinks etc. and and stuff in the in the top half as well. So you know I think that it'll be the screen and it'll be a bit of a refurb going on at the same time. Obviously the screen's going to Tilton as well, so uh, that would be a good thing. Yeah. How are we doing on the uh, second best goal, Craig? Do you know any more votes? It's it literally there hasn't been many more votes that have come through, but it is. It's it's on par between at the moment. Uh, I should look back. Yeah, I was up, I was having a look, but it's so far back now. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So we are looking at the the two goals that Spurs actually have both come into the running. So Dealey's one mm. in the League Cup, and Larson's one in the uh, uh, in the Premier League. And then the only other one that's that's well and truly in the running there is is Cameron Jerome's at Liverpool. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. What's just, that? Just, just, just before we go, because it's got it's quite a good point. It's come up on uh, YouTube, and I think we should address it. Um, from a, a chap called Gary Johnson, he says, uh, "Are some of you afraid to say the truth about how Blues are in case we don't in- get invited to the nights out at Blues?" We get invited to so many oh, nights. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we get everything paid for as well, apparently. We had some crisps uh, as well, didn't we? We did. We got some crisps. We, we got some, some chocolate. Crisps, um... I'll tell you now, I'm not afraid <laughs> because they've encouraged us to be open and honest. Yeah. And throughout, that's what every fan should be. Yeah. Mm. So, no, I'm not afraid to say that if, if it's poor, it's poor. I've been invited no, one, once, in I'm still been, once in 10 so, years. No, because home and away. Once in 10 years. an open night. Should yeah. be able to say whatever you want. Of course. I've yeah. already said what I, I've that's, already... That's the, beauty, that's the beauty of having a public forum, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I've already said what I think, so I'm definitely not afraid. No. No. Uh, can I just say, we've never had so much as a sticker off the blues. No. I'm still waiting for my check, Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm still, I'm still waiting for someone to treat me like a human. Oh, if, that's if, a great <laughs> show. Steve Portman. We need Jeremy on the screen with his come on blues as the announcement he's made of the teams. Oh, def- definitely, definitely. It'd be ace. It'd be absolutely superb. There's nobody that shows as much passion as him. So why why not? You know, let's 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 uh, see if we can make it happen. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm. most definitely. Well, we could we could even like get a song mixed with it in there. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? There you go, Chris. Um... Challenge set. Challenge at it. Sunderland he did he was going come on blues and then the whole rest of us went come on blues and we did it for about five minutes and brilliant. it was great honestly and yeah. it was just brilliant yeah so we should do something like that what's our goal of the season so far oh there ain't that many is there <laughs> <laughs> right, no, on. I gotta go back haven't we Dansfield against Plymouth I reckon you know when he's not, yeah. not- Last, last minute. Bacunas last Saturday. Bacunas yeah, volley last Saturday. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't stay in the ground, I don't know. I'm not going to go in the net. 
Uh, Gardner's free kick against West Brom. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gardner one, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's got to be. Yeah. Most definitely. Myoshi mm. says Mark Brooks. Myoshi yeah. at Sunderland, was it? Bristol City. It was all right. I wouldn't say it was one of the best goals I've ever seen. Bristol City, the volley. That was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, Dembele scored a cracker, says Steve. Yeah, it's good too. Yeah. I thought both of his goals at Blackburn were going to be up there, aren't they? Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what a swan, going back, it? sorry, going back to the FA Cup for a minute. What's people's opinions on it? Do you think we should give it a go, or do you think we're just going to whimper out first? You know, uh, give it a go. Let's get a good cup run. Okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah, give it our best shot. Mm. I'm, I'm, it's, like, it's like we can throw money down the drain. Let's put the reserves out at Forest Green, which we did last year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got away with the win. Um, you know, we've done it every year. Burton Albion and you know we don't even open the ground up it's it's terrible we should mm -hmm. we should make you know we should, we should be going to Hull and saying we want 10,000 tickets right and we'll sell them if, if we get them we'll definitely, sell them definitely. I hope we yeah, try yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit sad though that is because the FA Cup's kind of losing its magic I think and when yeah, you go back yeah. when you go back 20 years or nearly 20 years and we played Stevenage at home in the cup I remember with Devlin and Francis up front yeah, and yeah. Wrexham, Wrexham when Brian you scored against us you know the, the ground yeah yeah cool. Rome's nearly mm, full for them. Yeah. Uh, now we're in the third round. Paul, Paul the, show, the show's been, it's been that exciting. We've overran, Paul. Have we? We have. have we? we have overran. Right. It's been a great show. It's been a great show. So if you want to wrap it up, Paul. Time flies when you're having fun. So, oh, yeah. So definitely. thank you very much, everyone, for watching again this week. And uh, it's a good night from me. And it's good night from Craig Courtney. Uh, it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from Mark Meredith. It's a good night from me and it's a good night from the robe. I forgot what I've got to say. Good night from me and it's a good night from Claire Giblin. It's good night from me and it's a good night from Watto. Is anybody left? Good night from me, good night from um, Chris. <laughs> and it's good night from me. And it's good night from John Boy. And it's good night keep the faith and keep right. Come on, Blues, let's go. Go on, Blues! Go on, Blues! Look forward to Friday. <laughs> <laughs>